What a blind sense of privilege. What a lack of compassion. Asao Inouye is a prominent professor of rhetoric. He doesn't want kids graded on English. We must stop saying that we have to teach this dominant English. If we do, that's racist, he says. If you use a single standard to grade your students' languaging, you engage in racism. People believe him. Education journals publish his ideas. Some schools have dropped grades. I'm skeptical, so I ask Annoy about it. He grew a beard after his speech. If you use a single standard to grade your students' languaging, you engage in racism. That standard of English tends to exclude um, uh, many groups of people. Hinoy claims I was unfair to him in this prior video because I said he opposed teaching standard English. But he did say this. We must stop saying that we have to teach this dominant English. What I'm saying is that students should have choices. So is it possible and is it uh, does it happen that a student comes in uh, who wants to learn the standardized English um, in my classes or ones that, I'm, that I would promote? Absolutely. And I wouldn't want to hold that against that student. So they shouldn't have to learn standardized English. Right. Isn't that what helps them succeed? No. Every country has a standardized language. If you're in France, you advance yourself by speaking French well. And there are uh, heated debates in those countries about the use and, uh, and, and details of those standards. I'm simply saying that I don't think everyone needs to be held to it. My parents came here from Germany. They made me learn standardized English. Where would I be if they hadn't? There are absolutely benefits to a standardized English in the world, but that same world creates those same benefits through certain kinds of biases. Those can be bad. You know, his ideas are influential. U.S. News credits him for professors ditching traditional grading and choosing labor-based grading instead, where teachers don't grade on spelling or even the quality of work. Grades focus on attendance and getting work in on time. No matter what other people think, your languaging is good the way it is. You got here with it. So I think that, to me, that feels very compassionate. It's all about compassion, he says. But his speech to professors had a different tone. White people like you, just like you, who came before you, have had most of the power, decided most of the things, built the steel cage of white language supremacy. I think you're toning it down for my audience here, because you and your conference speech were all about this is an oppressive country and white racism. Yeah, that is the uh, largest uh, annual conference of my field. I was the chair of that, and I read that rhetorical situation as, a, as an, a, a moment to make a statement. You actively promote white language supremacy, which is the handmaiden to white bias in the world, the kind that kills black men on the streets. Teaching kids standardized English kills black men? It can, I think. I think it can. We have Eric Garner saying, I can't breathe, but no one's listening, and he dies. That's the logics that, that we get. Logics? Eric Garner died because we reject black language? I don't understand what Inouye is talking about much of the time. If that's how professors speak today, I see why college students are depressed. What I'm getting at is the logics that go with white language supremacy and uh, what I call uh, habits of white language or how. Years ago, there was a controversy when Oakland promoted Ebonics, saying it's just a different way of talking. A nationwide debate was ignited when the Oakland, California School Board recognized Ebonics as a language. I need all of you right now on the count of three to say ask on three. One, two, three. Ask. Ebonics advocates said teachers like this were wrong to tell kids don't say ax. Black English, they say, should be valued as its own language. You say she's here, you can say she here. That's just bad English, isn't it? How can you say that's a language? No, that's different English. No, that's it's not bad no, English. That's not, but that's your opinion that it's bad. It didn't do enough. Everyone says, yes, we believe in that, but it doesn't, they didn't do anything in their classrooms or in their schools or other places. What you're talking about now really is what the Ebonics advocates were saying. I think so. You've won. <laughs> well, I don't know if we've, I don't know if, if anyone has won. Um, I think we still are in the struggle. You know, he talks a lot about white supremacy and white language supremacy. White people can perpetuate white supremacy 
by being present. Now, what I'm not saying is that white people are bad. You identify as a Japanese American. Mm -hmm. Japanese Americans earn on average much more than the average American. Mm -hmm. What kind of white supremacist country lets that happen? Well, I probably am one of the exceptions. But you're not. Japanese Americans earn $83,000 a year. Mm -hmm. The average American, 62000 It's a big difference. Japanese American communities, we wanted to be seen as American, more American. Japanese Americans prospered because of that. So do other immigrant groups. Many now earn more than whites in America. They succeeded by learning standard English because America has been relatively colorblind. I get a little uh, uncomfortable with colorblindness. That's not how humans work. Um, I wish that we could. I really do. Um, but there's no such thing as a neutrality. But there is neutrality. If you hire people based on the highest test score, you're being neutral about other factors. Depends on how you see the test. Tests may be biased. And high school honors classes, he calls them. Pretty white spaces, very white spaces. The students who end up there are almost all demographically white. Should we abolish the honors classes? I mean, clearly some kids have an advantage. They have the computers, they have interested parents. So get rid of... Wouldn't it be a better school to get rid of those honors classes, put those same students back into the other classes with others so that they can help their peers? That's what college is all about, meeting people you, you wouldn't have met otherwise. Well, that might make things more equal, but it clearly hurts the kids who studied more, worked harder. They don't get to learn as much. I don't think so. I think it absolutely helps everybody. Finally, talking to professors, he said, The point is a Marxian one. Who owns the means of opportunity production in the classroom? You're a Marxist? Marxian. <laughs> Marxian. Yeah. Where has Marxian philosophy ever helped people? Where has it ever worked? Marxian and Marxist philosophies are a critique. They don't tell us what to do. They don't give us a plan of action. They're not socialism. The way I use uh, Marxist critiques and analysis in my work is to understand systems. The capitalist system isn't working very well. <laughs> it's so easily corrupted. Um, there are some nice things about capitalism. There really are. Um, but it is a deeply flawed system that is based on inequality. What's better? What's Ever work better to lift people out of poverty and misery? Yeah, I, you, that's a great question, John. I, I don't think that I have the answer, but I do know that, like, I mean, I don't think that it's, I don't think I'm saying, you know, dump it, dump capitalism. We don't, we can't have, I don't think that's an option either. I think we can do better. But what would do better? For years, intellectuals promised Marx's ideas would work better than capitalism. Those ideas led to mass murder and poverty. Nevertheless, at colleges today, Marx's views are widespread. Students often hear them unchallenged. I say these ideas are wrong and bad, and they ought to be vigorously debated. Thank you for watching, and I thank Asao Inouye for agreeing to debate. Most Marxian professors we contact these days won't debate.